Friends, welcome back to Drawing Conversation, where as always, I am your dedicated nerd, host, and artist, Danny Fisher. And today, we're drawing the origin and history of Spider-Man. Let's get to it. Friends, before we jump in, just wanted to say thank you for your time, and I hope you're doing great. Oh, and hey, for those who are returning, you know I love your face. So today, well today, we are drawing the spectacular, the sensational, the amazing Spider-Man. Guys, I cannot tell you how much I loved Spider-Man growing up, and still do. Spider-Man had his first appearance in Amazing Fantasy number 15, written by none other than Stan the Man Lee and Steve Ditko. Amazing Fantastic was an anthology comic. Think of it as kind of a variety show, kind of a mixed bag. So you had short stories of characters that would just pop in and pop out of the publication. But typically the stories were in the realm of the amazing and fantasy, hence the name. One such character that appeared in the publication was Spider-Man. And within three months, Spider-Man was quickly becoming one of Marvel's highest selling comics. And well, it just kept growing into one of the most recognizable superheroes of all time. Now, the best part for me was the amazing artwork and the fantastic stories. I mean, the best part is genuinely reading a story that a true fan that really loves the character has written and seeing how that writer evolves and changes the character. Now, Spider-Man has certainly evolved over the years. And I don't wanna bore you with too much history. I mean, we all know the story of Spider-Man, but for those who need a quick reminder, Spider-Man's true name is Peter Parker. And Peter is a poor 17-year-old kid living in New York. He lives with his elderly Aunt May and Uncle Ben. And Peter is awkward in literally every way. Oh, and by the way, he's a genius. Like on the levels of Tony Stark, Bruce Banner, or Hank Pym. Crazy smart. So it's hard for him to talk in the first place. And when he does, you need a PhD just to keep up. Well, being so smart, he ends up at all kinds of science exhibitions. And at one such exhibit, he's bitten by a radioactive spider that transforms him into Spider-Man. Yes, he can climb walls, lift anywhere from 100 to 300 tons. Yeah, it's all over the place. But let's just say he is extremely strong. Moreover, his flexibility, speed, durability, stamina, go through the roof, like level 10. He also has an advanced healing factor. Now, nothing as fast as Wolverines or Deadpools, but he has recovered from serious injuries in less than a week. But my personal favorite ability is his spider sense. Think of this as almost uh, precognition, like almost even telepathy. Maybe not quite at that level, but a super awareness of his entire surroundings and any threat that might be present. But with all of these powers and abilities, Spider-Man cannot shoot his own webs. What a miss. I mean, really? Now, being a genius, he creates his own formula of spider webbing. That just happens to disintegrate after about an hour and has to periodically reload these cartridges loaded on his wristbands. And with all of these great abilities and powers, there must also come great responsibility. And Peter has to learn this the hard way. You see, when he first starts out, he's using all of his gifts selfishly. He decides he's gonna be a pro wrestler for a TV show. And one night while performing, a thief happens to rob the station. And while Spider-Man could have easily stopped him, he let him go. Well, that same thief goes on to rob and kill Uncle Ben. And a grief-stricken Peter decides to make a promise. A promise to use all of these gifts for the forces of good. And that is a very, very basic abbreviated version of Spider-Man. But I also wanted to draw my favorite versions of Spider-Man in no real order. To start, I love Miles Morales, one of the most powerful versions of Spider-Man throughout the multiverse or Spider-Verse. Okay, so to explain the Spider-Verse would be a huge task and I'm not trying to dive that deep in this episode. But keep in mind that Marvel loved the idea of the multiverse and introducing some of those characters into our universe. 
And when Marvel first introduced Miles Morales, it was a home run. So Miles Morales, very similar to Peter, is from New York and is also a bookworm. Maybe not as smart as Peter, but a really sharp kid. His powers are very similar to Peter's, almost in every way. But in his universe, the spider that bit him was part of a super soldier serum project. You see, they were trying to recreate Captain America. So Miles has many powers that Peter doesn't. For example, he can become completely invisible. Think of it more as a perfect camouflage. Better than that, he's got something called the Venom Strike, an electromagnetic touch that works like an overpowered taser. And that ability just keeps evolving. I think that was part of the success of the character. He was a teenager, growing, changing, and was also learned to grow and change with his new powers. And I am sure we're going to learn many more abilities as the years go on. My next favorite version of Spider-Man is Spider-Man 2099. And as the name implies, it takes place in the year 2099. You see, back in the 90s, Marvel was playing around with all kinds of future character designs, from the Hulk to the Punisher, Black Hawk, even Doctor Doom. But the most memorable was Spider-Man 2099, is Miguel O'Hara, half Mexican, half Irish, and just happens to be head genetic engineer for Oscorp. Miguel always loved the 21st century Spider-Man and was kind of obsessed with his powers or recreating them. Well, in the middle of a procedure, Miguel is sabotaged and the experiment goes awry and it transforms him into Spider-Man 2099. The best part for me was that he actually had organic webbing that he could shoot from small spinnerets, obviously located in his wrists. He also had venomous fangs that he could use to paralyze his victims. And while he doesn't have a spider sense, he made up for it with ultra enhanced senses. He also has claws at the end of each fingertip that he uses to stick to and climb walls. These claws are razor sharp and strong enough to cut through virtually anything. Spider-Man 2099 was so popular that he's made several appearances in the current Marvel timeline and continues to be a fan favorite. So, I want to come to a really weird one. This is Spider-Hulk. And while this version only appears once, as far as I'm aware, I still loved it. It was just hilarious. And I'm usually not a huge fan of mashups, but this one was great. This story takes place when Loki's trying to be a hero. Yeah, for a short time there, he was trying to be a good guy. And he casts a spell on Bruce Banner to drive out the Hulk. Now, with Peter being radioactive, he just happens to be nearby and absorbs the Hulk persona. Well, it's a Fantastic Four that come to the rescue. And it's the thing that does an amazing rear naked choke and subdues Peter. This allows Peter and Reed Richards, AKA Mr. Fantastic, to sit down and do a whole bunch of science babble and jargon and make a device that pushes the whole persona out of Peter and back into Bruce. Again, just a silly one-off, but so much fun to see the Hulk shooting webs and swinging through the city. Finally, we make it to the symbiote Spider-Man, also called the Venom Suit, which is kind of a misnomer because really, doesn't become Venom till it fuses with Eddie Brock. But hey, if you want the full story, scroll on down to the description of the video. There's a link, you get the full story. Anyway, the symbiote spider first appeared in 1984 in Secret Wars number eight, where the most powerful heroes and villains are taken from Earth and put on an alien planet where they are forced to do battle. Well, during these battles, Spider-Man's classic red and blue suit is damaged. And Spider-Man just happens to stumble on what he thinks is a black liquid suspended in a jar. Well, it accidentally gets opened, fuses to Peter, and becomes the iconic black and white spider suit. Even though later we find out that that liquid was actually an alien trying to take over Peter's mind, it was still pretty cool to learn all the new powers. And honestly, Spider-Man really needed a facelift in the 80s. And this story arc was the boost it needed. Now this is just a very, very small sampling of the Spider-Verse. And there is no way I could cover all of them. But what makes Spider-Man so unique and loved in 
any version across any universe is that he or she always shows up. And no matter how dangerous or how dark, the spider never backs down and never gives up. And this is why I will always love me some Spider-Man. Friends, thank you so much for watching. Your support helps this channel tremendously. And hey, if you haven't already, please consider this your personal invitation. Hit that subscribe, hit that like, turn on those notifications, and scroll to the comment section. Leave a comment. Let me know how I'm doing and what characters you want to see drawn. And I will talk to you again soon.